Senator Bernie Sanders once said that pharmaceutical companies were making the opioid epidemic worse. During a town hall back in March, Sanders said, quote, I've got to tell you, I'm not a great fan of the pharmaceutical industry in general. For them to make, uh, to, to make billions in profits by getting young people addicted and ruining their lives, we have to start holding them accountable. Well, that's true. Now, surprisingly, some Democrats are actually taking his advice. Recently, Claire McCaskill. Now, Claire McCaskill and I, we do not see eye to eye on a lot of issues. Okay, I've been very critical uh, of her in the past. It's somebody that I don't give a lot of credit to. Has actually been doing an investigation into a company that is pushing these opioid drugs and getting people addicted. Now, uh, the company that they looked into is called Insys Therapeutics. Now, Insys Therapeutics in 2012 got an approval to sell an opioid for cancer patients with acute pain. This is for cancer patients, right? It's apparently a sprayable form of fentanyl called Subsys, right? So they create this product, they get it uh, approved, and of course, once it's approved, they want to make some money off of it, right? They're corporations, that's what they do, right? So they try to market this opioid for cancer patients, and the thing is, they couldn't find enough cancer patients willing to take it. So what they did is they decided to lie. What this investigation found is that in order to boost their sales, the company allegedly took uh, patients who did not have cancer and made it look like they did. Now, this is reported in CNN, so I have to give them a lot of credit for this actual investigative journalism. Hey, you don't see a lot of that on CNN, so big credit to them on that. Now, according to a federal indictment, an ongoing congressional investigation by Senator Claire McCaskill, the drug maker used a combination of tactics such as falsifying medical records, misleading insurance companies, and providing kickbacks to doctors in league with the company. Now, McCaskill's report gets into the, de uh, into the details. They say that because of the high costs associated with subsist, a lot of insurers wouldn't pay for it unless it was approved in advance. This process is called prior authorization. Now, in order to get prior authorization for people who didn't have cancer, Insys decided to set up an elaborate charade using their employees that pretended to be doctor's offices to call these insurance companies and to fool them into approving drugs for patients that didn't actually need them. This is amazing. The Senate report documents how beginning in 2014, when someone needed to obtain prior approval for a subsist pre a prescription, it was actually an insys employee who ended up calling the insurer and its affiliates to persuade them. The insurers actually thought that they were talking to somebody who worked for the actual doctor. And the insys, insys employees had created craft, uh, had carefully crafted scripts designed to intentionally leave that impression, according to this report. Insys also went so far as to obscure its outgoing phone number on caller IDs, so the calls would not be traced back to the company. And if an insurer needed a phone number for a return call, the company employees reportedly provided an 1 800 number manned by another INSYS representative instead of contact information for the prescribing physician. During these calls, there is usually a question, did the patient have acute pain caused by cancer known as breakthrough pain? Again, cancer was a requirement for, prior, uh, for clearance in order to prescribe subsists. So how did the company get around that? Well, they got around it by creating the impression, as I said, on the phone calls, that the answer was yes, they did have cancer without actually saying that they have cancer. Very interesting. Now you might be saying, come on, dude, that's, no, no, they, they really didn't do that, did they? Well, we actually have a recording of one, of one such call. Here it is. And I apologize <laughs> for long waits, but um, how can I help you now? I need to know if a certain medication requires authorization and if it does, if I could do it over the phone, it's urgent. Oh, okay. Um, you're calling from the doctor's office then, correct? Yeah, Dr. Madelon's office. Okay. And what is the diagnosis for the patient? Oh, uh, let me look through here. See. Management is intended for the breakthrough. Uh, Medications intended for the management of breakthrough cancer pain. The doctor's treating the patient's breakthrough pain. 
with the diagnosis code of 338.29. 338.29. Is it also for the breakthrough cancer pain or, or not? Well, there, it, there's no code for breakthrough cancer pain. Yeah, that, and that's fine. I I was I typed out the description. I just wanted to make sure that I heard you correctly. For breakthrough pain, yeah. Good, okay. And what is the anticipated duration of therapy? Um, well, there's no end date. I mean, we just try to get for a year and go from there. Okay. There's one of the call between a representative and an insurer talking about breakthrough pain. And he's like, well, is it cancer pain? It's breakthrough pain. You see her trying to, uh, not to say the word cancer, but anyway, that was their uh, tactics. Now, this specific call that was recorded involved a New Jersey woman named Sarah Fuller. Now, Fuller, she didn't have cancer. But they ended up giving her subsis anyway. The doctor prescribed her a, a prescription and the insurance company paid for it. Now, uh, what happened to uh, Sarah Fuller? Well, it turns out she is uh, no longer alive. Uh, she passed away, not from cancer as she never had it. But she actually died last year of an overdose from subsis. The prescription that she never should have had. So this is a very big example of greed having deadly results. Again, there's that wordplay. They left out the word cancer. They avoid saying that Fuller had cancer, but it was just to break through pain in order to get this medication approved. It is subtle, but it is there. Now, of course, this is not the only example of the wrongdoings of, of incest. They actually have a long track record, track record of doing this. Uh, in December, federal prosecutors in Boston criminally charged six former INSYS executives, according to its former CEO, or I'm sorry, including its former CEO, with both fraud and racketeering charges related to this very medication, to subsist. Prosecutors described a nationwide conspiracy to bribe medical practitioners to unnecessarily prescribe a fentanyl-based pain medication, and to defraud health care uh, healthcare insurers. As alleged, top executives of Insys Therapeutics, Inc. paid kickbacks and committed fraud to sell a highly potent and addictive opioid that can lead to abuse and life-threatening respiratory uh, depression. Uh, that, of course, unfortunately happened to Sarah Fuller, and she paid the price. Uh, now, uh, Harold uh, H. Shaw, special agent in charge of the Federal Bureau of Investigation's Boston Field Office, said this in a statement back in December. Now, other federal charges have also been brought against individuals connected to subsists, and several state attorneys general have filed lawsuits of their own. Not only that, but back in July, former INSYS regional manager for the Southeast, Karen Hill, pled guilty in a related federal case brought in Alabama. <clears throat> Excuse me. In court filings, she described in recorded conversations how she taught salespeople to try to entice doctors to take kickbacks to prescribe this medication that these people don't actually need. Now, she gave some examples that some of her doctors were motivated by money, chocolate, and spending time with her. Hmm, very interesting. Uh, I wonder what they did on that time together. Uh, now, federal prosecutors in Alabama said in, release, uh, in a release announcing her plea. Uh, now, when the sales representative asked Hill how to identify doctors who are financially motivated to prescribe subsist, uh, Hill explained that she looks for doctors that are money hungry and went on to describe how to figure out if a doctor has, quote, light in their eyes and is willing to play ball. Oof. This is gross. It is grotesque. This is kind of the greed that we're fighting against. Now, I do have to note that this company committed the cardinal sin of don't rip off the rich. In this case, insurance companies. You rip off insurance companies, oh boy, you're going to be in a lot of trouble. You rip off regular people, not a problem. 
But now it also should be noted that Claire McCaskill, who is leading this investigation uh, in Missouri, she receives a little bit of money from the health insurance industry uh, for full disclosure. However, the health insurance industry is actually not one of her top donors, although she has received uh, several hundred thousand dollars from them in campaign donations. But despite that, I think I, I really do feel the need to give her, her office a lot of credit. Because look, this is a company that was getting doctors to prescribe unnecessarily powerful addictive drugs to people who, again, didn't need them, directly causing at least one death that I know of, possibly more, um, possibly more deaths, and possibly even more addictions of people going from fentanyl, going to, from the subsist to heroin. So... I gotta, again, I got to give, give a lot of credit here to CNN and uh, Claire McCaskill, right? So CNN for doing excellent investigative journalism and Claire McCaskill for actually doing this investigation. Um, and, and that really highlights the greed that is baked in the pharmaceutical industry. Now only if we could do something about it to fix it, well, that would be the next step. We've got to change the way our pharmaceutical company operates we've got to take it away from a for-profit system uh so that it can actually focus on what it's supposed to do and that's helping people hey everybody thanks for watching this video if you want to see more like this please hit the subscribe button below and if you want to support truly independent progressive media please consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash tyt nation